New in blockchain this week, Europe and the rest of the world continues to leave the US behind. We've got the London Stock Exchange moving forward with the blockchain protocol. We've got hundreds of billions of dollars of asset managers that are bringing blockchain solutions and all kinds of other top tier news. You got to check it out on this week's episode. It's time for the Security Token Show. We're here to bring you the latest and greatest in security token news. Coming from across the globe to your living room. And delivering all the latest STOs and getting you up to date on what's happening in the market. So what are you waiting for? Let's get on with the show. Welcome to the Security Token Show, folks, especially those of you who are new listeners and viewers. We've got a heck of a show lined up today. We're here in sunny Miami, Florida. I'm Hurry Konings. This is Kyle Solon. We're your hosts. Uh, and man, do we have some crazy things happening around the world, not in the U.S. this week. Uh, and before we get into that, though, we have to thank our sponsor. As always, Kyle, they make this show possible. But this week, we're going to do a little self-promo because it's all about Tokenize This, folks. Tokenize This is our virtual conference. It's launching October 11th. It's three days long. Uh, includes two days of fantastic panels and speakers about what security tokens are, how they're being used how the institutions are using them, getting into the weeds of the blockchain, followed by an all-day workshop on how to actually embrace security tokens. We're putting it all together, over 30 speakers, these amazing highlights. Go tap in, it's completely free. Check it out at summit.stm.co in order to register. And with that, Herwig, I think we can get into our top five. Oh, let's do it. And kicking off our top five is Asia Next. They have been on a license spree with a new license approval to be a registered market operator in Singapore. This comes on the heels of their CMS license approval in June. And they applied, in addition, for the major payment institution license as well that's going to be coming out soon. If you don't know Asia Next, they are a JV joint venture between SBI and SIX, in addition to many of the other initiatives between those two companies. But AsianX has been on a roll in Singapore, focused on crypto, derivatives, and tokenized securities, and are getting all the licenses to be able to make that happen. AsianX is bringing together that vision where you can use all of the licenses that they have in Singapore to power tokenized investments that could say also be cross-listed on the Osaka Digital Exchange, which the SBI has a, a part in. Of course, also on the SDX, the Swiss Digital Exchange. What a what a fantastic collaboration here. Asian X is really going to be, be kicking it on the scene soon, I think. Number four, we've got a big German asset manager, Kyle. This one's called Metzler. They've got over $80 billion in assets under management, and they are claiming a first, a history-making move in Germany, the first fund to be tokenized uh, on-chain uh, it's fantastic news. We've seen a lot of bonds coming out of Germany specifically, but with the MIFID laws out there, there have been opportunities like this. We've been waiting for this, and now Metzler has come to the to the plate here and taken that win down. They're working with Cashlink. We talked about them in the past. They're going to be doing the registrar work behind the securities, and they're working with funds on chain. This is a private trial. Uh, it's going to be three months long, so hopefully after that, we're going to see some stuff come to the public, Kyle. Great to see this coming out of Germany. They've been so progressive on a lot of these initiatives. As far as I could tell, this AUM of the fund was in the multi-billions, which would put it very similarly to some of the tokenized funds we've seen coming out of the UK, like with Aberdeen. And so great to see a lot of the familiar faces like Cashlink getting involved in multiple different initiatives to make a more scalable process for all of the asset managers that they can work with. Well, Kyle, there is no word on what blockchain they're using, mm. but hopefully we're going to find that out soon. Number three, what's that? Number three is Two Tokens. This is an advocacy group that has a, had their application approved for the European Blockchain Sandbox, the first cohort here in 2023. And Two Tokens applied alongside ABN AMRO, as well as Asset Blocks and Rabobank, which is a $900 billion asset manager, by the way, in Amsterdam. 
And the goal here is to explore all kinds of initiatives around tokenized real-world assets and stablecoins, but they did note that their specific focus is around bank deposit tokenization, an initiative we've seen from all kinds of different banks and financial services providers around the world, as this seems like the, maybe the first step in bringing a lot of these collateral assets on chain to then be able to do all kinds of other things. They certainly are exploring real securitization, as well as potentially leveraging NFTs for metadata management, all kinds of things on top of it. But congratulations to the team behind Two Tokens and the rest of their group for having the application approved. Yeah, kudos to Two Tokens for sure, and to the you know, to admire the European blockchain sandbox. Like yeah, the idea right? that there is this environment that you can trial out with major banking partners and talk to regulators and do this stuff. That's something we yearn for in the United States. That's I for think. sure. Moving on to number two, big news out of South Korea, folks. We've been talking about it. I've been telling you, South Korea is moving on to the scene this year. And Murray, one of their biggest asset managers, over a half a trillion, folks, uh, they have made a huge announcement. They are partnering up with Polygon Labs uh, in order to power a lot of their trials that are they're doing to test out and, and power their future digital markets technology. Specifically, they are actually doing it as a group. This is the Murray Asset Security Token Working Group, which features SK Telecom's uh, NFI. That's their next finance initiative focused on tokenization. You've also got uh, HANA Financial, Linger Studio, as well as Coinplug uh, that are a part of this. So you've really got a whole group of companies here now working and selecting the Polygon blockchain uh, and their advisors and support in order to go ahead and, and start trialing out this technology. A major, major announcement. Like I said, Kyle, I think we're going to see some big news and major uh, tokenizations out of South Korea next year. This is another big win for Polygon. We've seen them have a lot of successful adaptations and all kinds of different asset managers they've worked with. I think Franklin Templeton or Hamilton Lane, one of those larger I I issuers yeah. as well is working yeah. with them. And all kinds of other asset managers as well are getting involved with Polygon, not only because of some of the scalability opportunities and the expansiveness of their development relationships, but also because it's an EVM, so it is Ethereum virtual machine compatible, meaning that a lot of the smart contract languages still work. Like from the best of both worlds, kind exactly of. Exactly right. And into number one, Herwig, the biggest news of the week, we have the London Stock Exchange. They are launching a blockchain-powered digital markets business. And so the focus here is to build an end-to-end -end platform for raising and transferring capital between their different underlying issuers and all their different banking partners. We've seen some of these types of strategies like with Swift leveraging different blockchain solutions. Certainly ICE got involved with T0. Now we see the London Stock Exchange also getting involved in blockchain-powered capital markets. They did note they want nothing to do with crypto, but they are focused on tokenized securities. We love to hear that, Kyle. And in fact, that's big announcement because so far, most activity out of the UK has been exclusively from Archax and what we've seen some recent headlines with Aberdeen, a major asset manager. Uh, but now with LSEG's plans to digitize, uh, very exciting. I think we're going to see a whole host of new potential use cases come to market here. Uh, but with that, Kyle, that's our top five. And uh, now let's head on over to the Success Network updates. Welcome back to the STA Success Network part of the show. Jumping right into the member updates, we have Tokeny partnering up with EVM-compatible public blockchain Clayton Foundation to increase RWA adoption in Asia. Tokeny comes with a track record in Europe, and Clayton already has a number of RWA projects live relating to commodities, accounts receivable, and more. Now, moving into the events this week, we have a webinar covering the top five tokenization trends based on STM's data this coming Wednesday, September 13th at 11 a.m. Eastern. And also at 11 a.m. Eastern on Thursday, September 14th, we have Mark Powers joining us again for another legal review. Come learn directly from an ex-SEC enforcement chief and ask all your burning questions. Please note that this session is only for professional and enterprise plan members. That's all for this week. Let's head on over to Peter Gaffney for the institutional updates. All right, good morning and welcome back to the institutional segment of the show. I'm Peter Gaffney, head of research at Security Token Advisors. I wanted to reiterate just how big the London Stock Exchange Group's entrance into this space would be. So as of now, majority of tokenization activity is done through the lens of you know, startup service providers who are all crushing it in their own rights some of which are indeed even partnering with some larger institutions. 
But there have been, you know, a few direct moves from incumbents directly in the capital market space. However, so, you know, names like JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, and Broadridge, among a bunch of others, well, not a bunch, but a handful of others, are in this top cohort. Now, LSEG, that would be huge. For one, LSEG is not directly competitive with these banks. Instead, they're complementary. Complementary with some of the deepest and most robust ties across so many verticals in the capital markets landscape. So rather than offering a tokenization service and then figuring out integrations, a standardization process among custodians, administration, distributors, and all the third parties after the fact, LSEG can probably incentivize its current blue chip partners to join these efforts right off the bat. So definitely a leg up right now um, to what some of the startup firms are experiencing and kind of working through, right? Kudos to the London Stock Exchange and looking forward to some future tangible updates on the blockchain powered exchange. All right, now looking at the custody side, Ripple is back with yet another acquisition. So after previously buying Medico for $250 million, not even six months ago, back in May 2023, uh, Ripple just acquired Nevada-based Fortress, Fortress Trust, announced this past Friday, probably for less than that $250 million price tag it paid for Medico. Uh, but this could be big time, as Prime Trust, one of the more widely used custodians in the United States tokenization space, found itself in hot water and filed for bankruptcy back in August of this year. So there's a custodial gap that needs to be filled with many of the U.S. broker dealers, alternative trading systems, transfer agents, issuance platforms, and more. Firms like Fortress Trust, Bitco, Fireblocks, etc., will all be competing for these contracts. So any efforts that Ripple, obviously, is able to provide for Fortress could certainly go a very long way in regard, you know, as a top digital asset platform. We also saw Murray Asset Security, South Korea's largest financial institution, who owns major ETF players like GlobalX and like Horizons, uh, will be working with Polygon for the Murray Asset Security Token Working Group. We're seeing a number of consortiums surrounding tokenization in South Korea specifically, like the Next Finance Initiative, uh, but we're still kind of waiting on notable products or real integrations from these recurring names like Murray, like HANA Financial, and SK Telecom. Still, this would be a tremendous win for Polygon Labs and for the greater Polygon ecosystem should it transpire into something tangible. That's all from me for today. Certainly some things to keep on the radar for what's been an extremely busy Q3 so far. Still a few more weeks to go. As always, stick around to see what Sam Sachs is looking at in the general markets coming up next. Hello and happy Monday. The security token market cap has had a solid week as it bounced to $16.8 billion. And Asia Next, the joint venture between Japan's SBI and Switzerland's SIX, received its license as a recognized market operator or RMO from the Monetary Authority of Singapore. This is going to present a breakthrough for tokenized securities enabling global liquidity. When the London Stock Exchange outlined the tokenized plans this past week, it said the ultimate goal was a global platform. Asia Next CEO outlined a similar vision last year. With this license, the company is now on its way to making it happen with the ability to provide listing, trading, and post-trade services in Singapore and with potential linkages worldwide. In other news, Soma Finance has joined forces with DeFi powerhouse Mantra and registered broker-dealer Tritorian Capital to introduce the Soma token. This digital asset proudly claims the distinction of being the world's very first legally issued and fully compliant digital security token thoughtfully designed to cater both U.S. and global retail investors. This groundbreaking announcement signifies a monumental leap forward in the world of DeFi. The SOMA token is set to pioneer regulation crowdfunding issuance on a U.S. compliant hybrid decentralized platform expanding the horizons of the ever-evolving DeFi landscape. And cryptocurrency exchange Coinbase has rolled out a crypto lending service for institutional investors in the United States, reportedly aiming to capitalize on massive failures in the crypto lending market. And it's very interesting to track the developments in Asia, as China has recently banned Apple iPhones to their government workers. Will a worse relationship between the U.S. spread throughout Asia? While not likely, it could potentially pose a risk to development as there is such a strong bias towards action in the Far East in the blockchain space. We're definitely going to be tracking that as well as all other developments. But for now, that's all. Have an amazing rest of your week and we will see you next Monday.
All right, Norwick, it's time to close out another amazing episode, 205, in fact, of the show. And we're going to wrap it up here with our companies of the week. Who did you have you wanted to highlight for making the biggest well, move? for episode 205, Kyle, uh, I am going to choose the LSEG, the London Stock Exchange Group. Obviously, they were our biggest news this week for big reasons. Uh, the fact that they're one of the leading European exchanges, one of the leading global uh, financial exchanges, and they do a whole lot more than just that. Uh, and the fact that they are now uh, what they cited as at an inflection point of the mm -hmm. business, they had been on the sidelines watching and, and playing with tokenization, but now they're really going to be moving forward uh, based on this announcement. They are planning a slicker, smoother, and more transparent digital markets. As you said earlier on the show, not focused on crypto at all. We see many marketplaces, such as Asia Next, as we talked about earlier, they're focused on both crypto uh, assets as well as tokenized securities. But uh, in this case, they are focused completely on just the use cases of capital raising and, and uh, transfer. Uh, so very excited to see what they bring to market. Uh, maybe even very similar, I think, into the Swiss International Exchange and their SDX setup. We might see something like that come out. Uh, but in the meantime, LSEG is just one of the sort of biggest movers, Kyle. I just I had to give them my company of the week. Makes total sense. This is such a huge piece of news and exciting to see them getting on board. And what about you, Kyle? Who did you pick for 205? For me, it was taking Mireille Asset Securities. This is a $500 billion asset manager who's been very involved as kind of a sidekick to a lot of the different debt issuances that we've seen come out across the APAC region. And now they are launching their own tokenized securities platform using Polygon Labs. They have seen enough to suggest that they're ready to dive in full force. And so it's great to see just another huge player really jumping in full force to get involved and launch this in a more scalable way. That clearly means that they saw enough benefit from those initial trials to continue to move forward to really put a lot of eggs into that basket. And so for those reasons, this is a player to watch moving forward and a great stamp of validation for the industry. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, South Korea is such a big uh, value add to the global economy, Kyle. But one of the things that they're most not well known for is, you know, people investing into South Korea. One of the things that Murray is looking at specifically you know, bridging that domestic market and creating interoperability into global financial markets. I think that's a fantastic, fantastic use case. Great choice. And with that, man, I think that's our show for this week. If you liked it, please like us on YouTube, comment, subscribe, do what you got to do, share it to anybody you think is relevant. Reach out to us on X or on LinkedIn. Shoot us a message. Let us know what you got. Or if you've got any news, certainly send it our way to make sure it gets covered on next week's show. And of course, always STM co for your latest news your latest trading information it's all there and check out summit.stm.co to go ahead and register for free for tokenize this uh, and meanwhile i hope to see you next monday happy tokenizing